Thank you. Uh, we at the Clapham Institute, we have also published this report on our website, uh, clapham-institutet.se. So if you want to, to find it easily, visit oidel.org or clapham-institutet.se. Now we leave the floor for Mr. Luca Volonte. That's nice. Thank you very much. Sometime in, in my presentation I repeat what our colleagues have uh, already uh, explained to you. But just start from the <coughs> important uh, uh, document I found just a few days ago. The uh, Eurobarometer, Eurobarometer 77, published in uh, spring 2012, they show that Sweden, among the uh, European member states, is the country where uh, human rights is the most important value. Do you consider human rights the most important uh, uh, value for yourself and for Europe? So when we talk, as uh, Claire has done, when we talk about uh, human rights, uh, it's quite strange to me learn that sometime some your uh, political party are uh, um, proposing to violate, uh, formally and explicitly violate human rights of uh, uh, freedom of education. If you are the most important country in Europe that consider human rights uh, the best value of Europeans, you should have an obligation to respect all human rights. That's firstly <coughs> for repeating very briefly what is already explained <coughs> in many uh, international uh, declaration, in many declaration, in convention, you may found that states should respect the freedom of education, they should respect the uh, parent rights, and uh, um, should implement as much as possible this right in their uh, constitution and uh, laws. I don't want to re repeat everything, is already uh, explained. That is very important. Sometime in, in Sweden, in the Scandinavian country, uh, there is a debate about how we could uh, interpret the European Convention of Human Rights. We should interpret very well every convention and every de human rights declaration, but that's appear to me that this Article 2 of Protocol 1 give, not, uh, give us not any possibility to be interpreted. That's appear quite clear that no person should be denied uh, the right uh, to education, and the state shall respect, not could respect or not, shall respect. That's in the future, but it's also an imperative. Shall respect the right of parents to ensure, and so on and so on. We may discuss about many other things, but that could be quite difficult interpreted the European Convention to uh, improve any proposal to restrict the right of education and the right of parents in the education. The same is in the Charter of Fundamental Rights of the European Union. It's a binding document among the uh, European uh, countries. The right of parents to ensure the education and teaching of their children in conformity with their religious, philosophical, and pedagogical conviction shall be respected, not interpreted. And Sweden, as uh, Italy and many other European countries, have an obligation to respect this document. Uh, is arising around uh, all the Western countries the question of neutrality of school? Uh, one of the idea <coughs> is that uh, only the state uh, have a power to uh, include uh, the neutrality, is really neu neutral. And this is a way to uh, prevent religious and uh, cultural conflict. This is in theory because as mm, our friends from France are showing us uh, many times quite all cases of terroristic attacks uh, are, were done by people educated in the public school. So in a theoric implementation, in a, a school where theoretically is implemented 
the uh, neutrality. And we should reflect about this question of uh, neutrality also because all human rights uh, impose to countries to respect the religious uh, um, believers. And that is possible the neutrality became a sort of a new religion? Apparently, yes. When you want to uh, abolish any differences or religious uh, uh, roots or tradition or cultural uh, tradition, and you impose a sort of humanistic, atheistic uh, approach, you are imposing a new dogma, a new religion. And when we talk about freedom of education, we are talk especially about freedom. So we are for freedom. If someone wants also the state, want to include, want to introduce, want to improve only one value and no a, a super atheistic uh, state, a super atheistic uh, ideology or a new religion of neutrality, they are, through, uh, they are imposing a um, state religion that primarily they don't respect the freedom of different opinion, the freedom of different religion. This is a very important advantage for us because we are uh, working, fighting, promoting respect of human rights and special respect of freedom for all people. This is an example, a pedagogical uh, and philosopher that's coming from important, from, uh, from uh, uh, the last century, Mounier. If education is the learning of freedom, it does not seem appropriate to give this power exclusively to the state. He wrote this during uh, 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 the um, last century where we uh, uh, learned that the totalitarian regime, both the totalitarian regime, the fascist and nazist on one side, on the other side the Soviet regime, were uh, imposed what? No religion as the rule. State religion, or what they define atheistic religion, was the best for social cohesion, for avoiding any conflict, and the result that we know in the last century was not more freedom, was not more right for people, was a catastrophic uh, human uh, uh, drama. So, Mounier gave us one uh, possibly, uh, possible approach. Many of this uh, uh, thinking uh, is including in the, in the um, elaboration, in the discussion, uh, previous discussion before the uh, Human uh, Rights Declaration, Universal Rights Declaration, the, the crucial uh, uh, question of family is the preferred option. When we talk about, when we talk about the best interest of children, what is the best ch interest of children, the first best interest for children is not only declared by the Convention of Children's Rights, staying and living with one mother and one father, but is logically the best interest is living in a family. So parents has the right as the, the first agent to define what is the best interest for their children. M Previously, the, uh, uh, of the state, or not. It's not only juridically uh, uh, defined, but also uh, logically defined. <laughs> and so the creation of different opportunity, different spiritual family, the question of interreligious dialogue is part of this uh, huge discussion that we are facing in the uh, Western country. Uh, you Council of Europe, especially Maria Lozeghi, a professor of philosophy of law, a part of this uh, commission against racism and intolerance in the Council of Europe. Uh, this team is working about the citizenship of education and social cohesion instrument, and they say very well that one part of the uh, Council of Europe uh, mission is promote human rights as an intercultural perspective taking in consideration the religious element. The right and duty of public authority for education program and the democracy and human rights must be exercised 
within the limits imposed by the Constitution with an adequate balance of other fundamental rights at stake as freedom of thought, ideology, religion, right of parents to educate their children. Human rights are not only itself, I'm finished, itself a value. They are many values and when you teach human rights as a part of your uh, school teaching, you should consider all the value included in the human right. Stop good practices. Academy, we have this Portugal private school, very interesting. We, we may share also by different other, um, other uh, um, information. And third, the question of home education, of homeschooling, and other possibility to respect the parent rights in the uh, education. And some, something about uh, risk of education, but we, we, we may uh, come back.